for that. Mark, uh, Mark mentioned that I was going to talk about the small college experience, which I am. Uh, my background's a little bit different than you folks. I, I'm from New Hampshire. I'm from northern New Hampshire, uh, which is uh, North Conway, which is up towards the White Mountains. If you've ever been there before, you were extremely lost. People don't go up there unless they want to ski. But because I'm from that area, it's very rural, and not a lot of kids in my high school even went to school. If I go back there now, there's not many people that, that uh, have, have left. They, they stay there quite a bit. Uh, anyway, when I, when I got done with high school, my, my vision was to go to a Division I baseball school, the University of Maine. University of Maine back then in the 80s was a perennial attendee of the, of the College World Series. They were, they were very good. So if you were a person from New England, you wanted to go there and play baseball. That, that's where you were headed. Uh, my compass was pointed there. That's all I wanted to do. Anything less than that would have been a disappointment. And so therefore what I did is I put myself in a bubble and uh, that, that, never, that never panned out. It was so disappointing to me that Mark mentioned I had a backup plan. I didn't at the time. And I think that was disappointing to my parents because I wanted to go to Maine. They didn't want me. So what I ended up doing is going to a, a prep school for one year, which is very unique in the, in the Northeast. You can, after you finish high school, you can go to prep school for one year, which I did. The school was Kimball Union Academy. It's a school much like this, but postgraduates up there, you can play football, basketball, and baseball, which I did again. You play other prep schools, and you also play freshman college teams. So I thought it was a very unique experience. But when I sat down with my advisor, who happened to be my football coach, he asked me, he said, Tim, what do you want to do when you leave here? I said, I want to play baseball. He said, Tim, I'm going to ask you again. He says, what do you want to do when you leave here? I want to play baseball. He said, you don't get it. He said, when you leave here, what do you want to do outside of baseball? And I said, well, my dad's in business. He says, Tim, stop right there. He said, what do you want to do? And I said, when baseball's over, I'd like to coach and I'd like to teach. And he, go, he said, that's, that's what I wanted to hear. So he proceeded to tell me a story because my football coach used to coach at Phillips Andover too. And he told me about this young man named Bill whose dad was a coach. And his dream was much like mine, although Bill wanted to play football. And he asked Bill these same questions. He, he told me the story about what he said to him. He goes, I want to play football. He goes, Bill, when you're done, what do you want to do? And he says, I want to teach and coach. He talked to me about this young man named Bill, and he gave him a, a quadrant of schools up in the Northeast, Wesleyan, Middlebury, uh, Bates, Bowdoin, Colby, these schools that you probably have never heard before. And he pointed this young man in that direction right there, and he went up there, and this young man ended up playing football, he ended up playing lacrosse, and squash, three sports in college, was a captain in all three sports, which is very unique. I think the thing that made the difference is, he proceeded to tell me the story is, Bill, when he left, left the school, he ended up getting into coaching his very first year. And he says, this guy's gonna be a heck of a coach. He's already coached seven years. He's now in the NFL coaching after seven years and will probably coach for a long time. And the guy I'm talking about actually, ironically, was born here in Nashville, but moved to Annapolis with his dad, then went to prep school up there in New England, and then went to school, little small school, Wesleyan in Connecticut. And that, got, that coach that I'm talking about has won six Super Bowls. His name's Bill Belichick. And he made his way through a small college. So what my advisor did is he pointed me a direction. He goes, I'm going to give you four schools in Ohio. And he goes, I want you to call your dad and tell your dad during spring break, I want you to visit these schools. It was Wittenberg, Denison, Worcester, and Ohio Wesleyan. And I visited those schools. And I told Mark coming in here today, the one thing and the reason I went to Ohio Wesleyan was based on one set of criteria. It was their student life center. It was called the Branch Rickey Center. It encompassed everything. But when I saw it, I said to myself, I can live in there. Well, I ended up going to Ohio Wesleyan, uh, stayed there for four years, graduated in 1984, played four years of baseball, played four years of baseball, 
I probably could have gone to the main, walked on, don't know if I ever would have played, but I played four years of baseball. I was a captain my senior year. The other opportunity I got to, to do was my college baseball coach was also an assistant football coach. Today my college baseball coach, then the assistant football coach, is now the general manager of the Pittsburgh Steelers. What opportunity did that provide me? While I was playing college baseball, he also offered me the opportunity to be a student assistant in football. So now I became a student coach while I was getting to play baseball. Very unique opportunities for a young man who's 18, 19, 20 years old. My college roommate, athletic director at the University of Arkansas, head of the Bowl series. Seven teammates, college division one football coaches right now. My other roommate, ironically, owns three very nice restaurants right here in the city of Nashville. Why does that make a difference? I would say that going to a small school, I found my passion. I found my passion, but I was identified. I was identified as a person, and I think that was the most important thing. Now I'm in a situation where I've never worked a day in my life. I don't have a J-O-B. I have a lifestyle. But the reason I have a lifestyle is because I was able to find that within a small school around people that I could identify with on an everyday basis. And I think about when Mark asked me to talk to you guys, I think about the, the impetus for our program and what we're about across the street at, at, at Vanderbilt it, is probably the ideals that I learned in, in small college. And that was, most importantly, building relationships. And building relationships in a small college environment is very, very easy to do. I think it helped me learn how to write. I wasn't a very good writer when I went to, to Ohio Wesleyan. But you think about it when you go to a small school and you have class sizes of 10 or 15, the teachers are more apt to give you projects they can actually take their time and grade. Not like at a big school where they have an opportunity to teach 30 and 40 and 50 people. Can't give out a lot of writing projects because who in the world, outside of a TA, teacher's assistant, is going to have an opportunity to grade those. So I was critically identified at a very young age. The personal attention, the participation. I learned what connection was. I learned what real connection was. Connection to teachers, connection to people. But I think the thing that I gained most was inner confidence. And I talk to our kids all the time at Vanderbilt about inner confidence. Sometimes you see pro athletes, college athletes, project themselves in a way that is manufactured. They want to project themselves through social media in a certain way. That's not, talking, that's not the confidence I'm talking about. Confidence I'm talking about is the one that's internal, the inner confidence that you get from achievement, the inner confidence that you get from preparation, the inner confidence that you get from developing strong, passionate relationships with people that you care about. I wouldn't have got that at the University of Maine. I may have known another life, but if I had gone to the University of Maine, there may be no way that I'm living at 3819 Whitland Avenue and have a chair over at Vanderbilt University coaching baseball. That never would have happened. The guy I was on the sidelines with the other night in the Big Ten Championship game, standing next to Coach Franklin is another person, Division III quarterback. One of my best friends who coaches in the NBA, Brad Stevens, Division III basketball player at DePauw. So you look at these people in life that have made their way and found their passion and found their confidence, but it's only through small school experiences and people they've identified with. But I think most importantly, my character and my mindset, because my teachable spirit, my discipline, my humility, my mental toughness, and my notion for team first was all developed being around small college people, coaches and teachers that could give me the time. I throw this out here and it's, it's not a, a hollow invite. But if any of you ever have any interest in speaking to me about opportunities that exist at the small college level, because there are many, and your eyes would be open, please let me know. I help a lot of young men that don't come to Vanderbilt, and I really enjoy it. And the reason being is because I, I was that one person at one time. 
So if you ever want to get a hold of me, you want to come over, you want to talk, you reach that, that man right there. He knows how to uh, contact me, and I'll get with you, and we'll spend some time on it. Thank you very much. Good luck to you guys. You move forward. <laughs>